keep it moving. Weightless, keep it live. Columbus, Ohio, don't stop, don't stop. Campus legends, Ohio State, O State, keep it moving. To so all the Buckeyes. From my perspective, I think at some point, um, as you learn the business, you realize that there are certain things that, or certain things you're not able to do, just you know, financially. Right. Yeah. And that there are people that have more muscle. Yeah. And so that you you think that okay, if I can I can release you know a record through a rhyme sayers or a, a raptivism, and that'll bring more exposure overall yeah. to my label. You know what I'm saying? If they're going right. to pick that up, you know, they're going to they're like you said, we check they check the back catalog. Oh, that's on waitlist. Right. So because you're trying to move up the ladder, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things you can't do. You know what I'm saying? If we yeah. had a million dollars. We probably don't have to release another record on any of you know. <laughs> we have all the financial exactly. capital we need, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. There's limits because right. you know pressing records costs money and sh shipping records costs money. And, and, right. What kind know? of distribution yeah. do you guys have now? Now we just use independent distributors. I mean, we still press everything in house from uh -huh. Revolver to Crosstalk, Cross -talk, to the Basement, Basement, Fat Beats, Fat Beats. Um, I mean, we've had several. We had Action. We've had yeah. you know what I'm saying. Some several that went out of business. Went out of and, business while we were you know we still were here and uh, owing us money. Yeah. Which is, I'm sure it's not like <laughs> you know, still yeah. sure, you sure. know. But yeah, like we've um, and then too, I think the thing with uh, I think that we've done always is like even though I put out like when I put out the the first Soul Position records on Rhyme Sayers, soon as I kind of did that, I went back and then Elogic, I started bringing him with me to tour, and I think that in turn kind of increased his visibility. And uh, you know, we were gonna do a DJ Prism record, and they were touring with me, and now I think with me doing. Especially since I've only things I've done have been like one album deals. Right. It's kind of helped come back because now I can tour and I'm in front I'll get in I'll get to have the advantages of being on a bigger label like a rhyme sayers, being able to tour one of their big acts and then when I tour by myself, they can't tell me who to bring, so I can always bring uh, an envelope uh, you know, right, right. a greenhouse, you know, a logic with me. Right. And I think that's how we kinda all benefit. And I think something that I believed early on was that, you know, we always kind of started out as a crew label, not like a let's make money off of this, let's just be a you know a business. We we're just like we're a crew. Let's put out people in our circles, make sure they have a means to put it out. So when you look at it like a crew first, it's hard to really uh, look at a situation like I don't want you to put out a record with them. Like you look at it like as long as you're putting out with a record bigger than us, with someone bigger than us, do it. Right. And that's kind of how I want it to be. I want us to be able to you know develop things because there's a big gap between like a label the size of a, of a waitlist and then like a Def Jux. And a lot of artists just can't go to Def Jux. Right. Or a lot of artists just can't go to Rhyme Sayers. But I think if they were, if their careers are built in a, an environment like waitlist where they're allowed to tour and develop, I think eventually when they want to make a bigger move, it's always there. Right. You know, we're not like, you know, doing seven album deals contractually binding people. Right. We're just like, hey, handshake, you know, right. let's do it. You know, here's what we made, here's what we didn't make, you know, and, and that's kind of how things have gone. You know? I mean, obviously you've done a lot, of, a lot of production on the records that you've put out, but I mean, do you think that um, there's a certain aesthetic to the label? Like, say, you know, putting a record out by like Envelope or whatever. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if you're going to look for other artists, is, is there... I think there was. I, don't, I think we're trying to kind of get out of that a little bit now. I think we kind of want to maybe expand the vision we have. I think, you know, like the envelope, and then I think we're, we're going to do the Zero Star, Zero's record uh, in November. And I don't think, like, either of those guys necessarily sound like, you know, me or Logic or, or Greenhouse. But I think that they've each got their own kind of niche. And, you know, Envelope developed his by itself. And then, you know, uh, Zero kind of did the same thing because no one put out his record, he put it out by itself. Right. And, it, and it was received well. And I think those are the scenarios that we kind of look at. Like, these guys already have so many things in place. They just need a support system. And if we can be the support system, then let's do it. Uh, but in terms of sound, like, I don't want to, anymore, I don't want us to be boxed into a certain sound. I mean, I want to do, you know, from instrumental records to rock records to whatever uh, we like. I just want to start putting it out regardless of genre now. You know, because I think there are a lot of things that we've learned in terms of putting out records that would be a huge benefit to people who are outside of our genre. Right. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, do you think it seems? I mean, it seems to me that, that Columbus is less segregated musically 
these days. I mean, do you see? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you probably oh, yeah. agree. Oh, completely. Yeah. Yeah, I think like the rock scene and the hip hop scene are definitely like like they're like this now. There's not where you go and you're like, oh, I see them at the rock shows. How come they don't come to the rap shows? It's it's different. It's is, and I think it's good because you have to take yourself differently as a musician. I mean, if you're a rapper and all you know is rap shows, you don't go to a rock show and you don't understand musicianship or stage presence or, you know, just how different people are doing things, then you won't even understand why people like that over there or why they don't like you. Right? They do. You know, sometimes it's good to, to, to look at that. And I think at the end of the day, no matter what genre it is, you should strive to be the best musician. And uh, I think it only helps us that the scenes here kind of, you know, the, the musicians respect one another, support one another. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, you mentioned like I, I heard that you were possibly gonna start a, another imprint and yeah. instrumental yeah. for instrumental stuff. Yeah, it's called the Analog Catalog. Okay. Yeah, like I'm I've got like the the struggle I've been having is just the first record I'm gonna put out has been a compilation and it's everybody that I know that's good, but it's taken me like nine months just to get all the music in. Right. right. And then by the time I get the music in, I got the art record, and the artist's like, well, I can't finish it. And it, But I've got pretty much everything in that I need to, to roll with it. You know, I wanted to put out something in November, but I think I'm going to wait until January or February right, to right. release the first thing. You know? Cool. Um, yeah, what other, I mean, what are your other future plans or, or goals for the label? Um, I just want to be here in another, you know, three years. <laughs> <laughs> you want to celebrate 10 yeah, years? I think, yeah, I think 10 has any, you know, label in the city and to still be relevant you know it's hard right that's the key yeah yeah to still be relevant yes there you go because you stay around 10 years and drop records <laughs> and no one cares about <laughs> <laughs> but you know if you're still dropping records and you're still selling you know because i think last year was probably i i think our biggest year because we we put out i mean oh five we could say 88 came out we dropped two greenhouse records and envelope record mm -hmm. and all of those records were at some point or another, no lower than the top five in Magnolias, you know, in sales at the shop, and a lot of them rank higher than anything locally, and a lot of national releases. And right. We had a uh, that was I, I viewed as kind of our, our breaking out year in terms of showing what we could do, and I think you know, starting this fall and into next year, I think hope I hope we'll have another one that kind of launches us into another you know year run, and, and I hope to be able to do more like national tours, which is like everyone in weightless can go. Right, right. You know? But I just want to be here in another three years and say <laughs> that people care. Right. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, I think, yeah, the old is the, is the new port of like the... Yeah. Like, you know, just in terms of like a, a label so. being able to, to yeah. say, you know, my, my artists play there, you know. Because yeah. yeah. you know. we're looking at like rhyme sayers when you go to Minneapolis and almost every artist on rhyme sayers can play in a menu size of the new port. Right. And headline. From the, even the guys who don't even sell a great amount of records that locally they got such a strong support system and the scene is so big there to whereas you know brother Ali I didn't they're getting 1300 people out when they you know do a release party and it's just bigger there I think we're building something that hasn't been built but that's where I'd like to eventually go right. you know to where we can just put out enough quality releases that people is associated with us with that and it just continues to build but I don't think we can do that if we just put out some kind of records I think we have to continually change what we do and, and adapt. Yeah, you meant, I mean, specifically you mentioned the Zero record yeah. in November. Yeah, that's going to be November 4th. Uh, we want to do another Greenhouse record after that. I don't know, I want to do another uh, Weight Room record, but it's coming along so slow because I have, you know, two other solo records I'm working on. And uh, I hope to finish both of my next solo records and figure out where they're going to be by the end of this fall. And, uh, but I think next year is probably, we're going to put out at least two to three records next year. I mean, and I'm sure, I mean, they're going to do another Envelope record, another, you know, I think Envelope, Greenhouse, Zero, I think that's going to be the next three records we put out, and then I'll probably, I might put a weight room out or another stream record out, it depends on what happens. Yeah. Okay. And then if we get some rock bands, you know, there's bands we like, but I'd like to do a rock record and just try it out and see how it goes, you know.